Okay, so I thought I'd use this to motivate you because Science of Human Endeavour is a fairly dry topic to explain as a video, uh, but it's important for use of stage one and stage two in physics, chemistry, or biology. So I thought I'd bring what I'd like to call you, but baby Yoda with me. Um, there he is. So the best essay should win him. No, dream on. Okay. Okay, so a couple of years ago, I recorded a video about science and human endeavour to help people out. But I think my understanding of what's involved here has improved since then, so I thought I'd make another one. So you've got your four basic aspects of the science and human endeavour. You've got communication, collaboration, development, influence, and application limitation. So if we focus on the communication collaboration, if you've got an article there that actually discusses a wide range of data being collected and shared with other people, or especially shared internationally, then you can start to talk about communication collaboration. And if it's using a process which actually involves review and verification, verification of results, you would do that as well. So um, Large Hadron Collider, for example, if someone's actually studied that and actually looked at some articles on this, there may be several hundred scientists involved in that where they're actually writing papers and allowing them to be looked at by other people and that evidence is scrutinised by others and is verified. Uh, there was one about the speed of light a few years ago, supposedly there was evidence that particles were going faster than that and that was shared with other scientists uh, internationally and that uh, proved out to be wrong uh, and, because they couldn't confirm it. And when they went back and checked, I think it was an issue with their data recording uh, systems there. So anything about that, that you can actually sort of explain your particular article or topic and then link back to these sort of points in yellow here would be great. And I would do these points in yellow uh, in italics in your article, and actually specifically in your, sorry, in your essay, and specifically actually show that you understand that this is showing international collaboration, uh, discuss that example, and then therefore this is an example of communication and collaboration. Okay, uh, the same with development here. Um, development's actually got a few different strands here. So you could talk about how complex scientific models are being developed and requires a wide range of evidence. So if you can see a topic or an article which clearly shows a wide range of evidence that's been collected and that's causing a change here in the model, or it's from many sources or it's across disciplines such as physics, chemistry, biology and so on, then you can talk about, oh, this shows development because it's across disciplines. It's a perfect example of a physicist or physicist working with biologists or working with chemists to solve a problem. So uh, that would be a good idea as well. And again, I would put that in italics in there to show that it's very specific and very explicit. Um, if it involves new technologies that are improving the efficiency of the procedures or the data collection, then you can talk about development there as well. So you might actually be able to bring, weave in both of those if it's a good enough article. If that's modifying theories or replacing models or processes, again, any of those terms you can get in there or phrases really does sort of give you a good understanding or show a good understanding of development. Okay, um, And uh, influence. If you're looking at influence there, um, you can look at how science is influencing society or vice versa. So society could be influ influencing how well science is, uh, scientific knowledge is being developed, especially if money is being poured into certain areas because of a social push uh, or a social need. All right. So um, just bear in mind that scientific knowledge can be influenced by these sort of considerations that are going on. So if you're having lots of deaths in cars due to side impacts, then that might actually drive scientists and engineers in particular uh, to go and research that and come up with side airbags that are actually also suitable for society with a, and look at the limitations and maybe respond to any criticism about that and try and actually completely fix that along the way as well. Um, it may be statistics that actually drive that as well, or it might be economic costs. Now, obviously, when you talk about this thing, it may be that you've got an article that involves shown across disciplines here, so it shows development but it also shows influence because scientific understanding in one field could influence another field or other areas of science. So when you do that, be very talk careful that you talk about these sort of phrases and say this is showing the influence here, but the fact that it's across disciplines also shows developments going on here of a model, okay, because it's across disciplines. So um, sometimes those blend together, so just be aware of that. Application limitation, I tend to leave this tool towards the end because it really helps give a justified conclusion of what you've been talking about. So if you can talk about the um, advantages or things that's going to be used in the future or how they're developing solutions, you can sort of talk about the positives there as being applications there. It might be that they're actually uh, making new discoveries or they're designing action uh, for sustainability to sort of uh, reduce global warming or something like that. 
or they're actually uh, evaluating the economic and social impacts or environmental impacts and actually making some changes based on that. So there you're talking about all the applications that are going on, all right, or they might be making predictions. Uh, they may be beneficial or unexpected consequences there, so that would all come under applications there, and you'd be monitoring or requiring assessment there. And if they're evaluating risks or they're talking about limitations of it, um, you've got to bear that in mind as well as a limitation. Providing opportunities for innovation, so you might see some uh, really good uh, new things coming out based on some scientific inquiry that's going on and someone's decided, ah oh, yes, we could actually use this with this in the future. So there's a bit of a unexpected consequences and innovation that kind of go together there. Uh, if it's informing public debate and it's being influenced by public debate, you can also talk about that. Um, it may be that there's insufficient data to actually um, completely finish what they're doing there. There may be possible uh, limitations to conclusions. It may be that there's actually lot, uh, limitations to the new technology that they've actually developed. And there may be negative impacts, and you can talk about those as well. So this is almost like a positives and a negatives here. What are the applications limitations? And that would help you give a good conclusion at the end here, which you, or with justification. So that's a good way of finishing off an essay is to talk about application and limitation at the end there. All right. If we look at some examples of one, so one of the first things you're going to need to do here is actually try and look at articles such as this one here and try and find some, um, I guess, some of those four aspects there. So when I read articles, if I'm seeing things like inexpensive ways or easy ways uh, to generate small amounts of electricity, I'm thinking, ah, oh, this could be an influence point here because it's talking about economics here. It might be a cost thing that we're trying to do here, so they're exploring uh, inexpensive ways for a particular society to generate electricity, which is that spark shaker I was talking about. Um, if I see that they've actually been working between countries here, like uh, Wisconsin in America uh, and a university in China, I can start to think about, oh, there's an example here of international collaboration going on where the engineers from one country are sharing the information with engineers from another country. And one might be testing the particular types of electrodes in the tyre, but the others might have another role to play and they might actually be sharing data and sharing tasks. So if you see evidence in an article of them doing that, then that's a really good way of talking about international collaboration there, okay. If there is indeed a need in a society to actually uh, come up with uh, other ways of capturing the energy there in tyres to actually sort of, um, uh, I guess, save energy generally in that country or overall by redirecting it towards a car battery in this case, you can talk about application here in terms of it's a scientific solution to a problem where they're trying to actually sort of uh, save battery power, I suppose, and, re and recharge batteries another way. Um, it could help with sustainability there in the environment by not having to recharge your battery completely um, using other techniques there, if you had an electric car, for example. So that's the sort of thing you're trying to do there. Uh, engineers might be looking for solutions in the application part here to generate electricity and so on. That wasn't a particularly good article, to be honest with she. So let's look at some others here. So here's. A so this is what I was talking about. There's 500 researchers around the world who met in Germany to review the progress of the study here of the new collider then. Um, and it was a new superconductor technology then. So when you look at that, there's obviously details about how that occurs and what the collider's going to be about that you can sort of talk about at the start of your essay. Um, but in terms of what is it shown in Xi, uh, the development is shown here because this new technology is going to improve the data collection and that could obviously influence, sorry, that could actually change our model of understanding for um, some of the subatomic particles or the standard model. It also showed influence because the advantage in scientific understanding relied on economic support. So to build this large, had this new collider, uh, it was going to require millions of dollars and across countries as well. So that economic influence would actually eventually lead to hopefully new scientific understanding, but it showed how society, or in this case economics, could actually influence how much we know in terms of science. So that was how society was influencing science, I suppose. A paradigm shift is all about changing a model there, changing the understanding of a particular model, and they were hoping that that was going to come out as a result of this new collider that's going to be built here. A lot of research has actually led to a range of technological advancements in this discussion in this particular article and it talked about the fact that the World Wide Web came about because at the time they actually needed an effective way of sharing data across a big campus there. Um, also we've had advanced medical imaging technology as well from some of the breakthroughs of these uh, such as uh, radiotherapy treatments for cancer. You can show that development is shown here because this is a new technology which improved data collection and again I'm using rather than italics I bolded mine. But I'm using some of those key terms from the she dot points for the four she aspects at the top here. But I've actually sort of identified that 
beneficial consequences as part of application. And I've been very specific and said some of the beneficial consequences, like, such as the, the web and the medical imaging technology. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to pick out parts of your article which you can actually say, oh, here's part of the dot points there in particular aspects of the she. And if you do that in a couple of sections then and do it in detail and in depth, then that would be good for the she. Don't forget when you do it, you do most of your science and human endeavor articles, you should also specifically explain some physics concepts. Now, it's not good enough to just say, oh, this involves inertia without actually explaining what inertia means. Or if you're talking about Newton's second law, you need to apply it. So state the law clearly, but also apply it to the situation here and explain why the second law is involved here and what is the physics behind a particular thing like a new airbag style or new seat belts for um, people in the country where they've actually started to become more overweight and the existing seat belt wasn't working for them properly. So they started to do tests where the seat belt would sit lower so people couldn't slide underneath it. So make sure you do actually do some physics here. And you want to do about 30 to 40 percent of the physics. Um, uh, I've seen read some that are far too brief, and I've read some that are far too long. But make sure you actually explain a concept as if the person's reading it can actually get an idea of what this is all about rather than just a bit of a mesh uh, a mess from uh, the article you need to perhaps research uh, some other articles or some other um, sources there to try and understand the concepts yourself and obviously reference those pictures will also help okay now people ask me to come up with a template so i quickly knock one up in the lesson um, about this so I suggested doing some sort of introduction in macro sentences. So that might involve the what, the how, the, how, the why, the who, and, when, and so on um, involved in this. And you're just doing some general sentences there, just very broad ones. And you might just identify the names of the physics concepts involved, like um, Newton's second laws involved, or something along those lines, or it involves pressure or friction or whatever. Um, and you would also quickly mention what she aspects you're going to discuss, like if it involves uh, you know, a collaboration or that's a influence one and so on so you're just introducing your whole thing but you tend to write that at the end after you know what you're talking about you've done your article your your whole essay you then do a bit of a summary about your article then and some diagrams so you might be doing some seat belt stuff or you might be doing ct scanners if it's another article so you're just sort of summarizing there what the article is about in three or four sentences and don't forget to do a bit of an introduction here about what's going on there with with that so Depending on the length of the article, that'll determine how long that's going to be overall. Try and explain your physics concepts in steps then and really get into the, the physics concepts. Try not to just sort of focus on what the article is saying and very vague statements like oh, if friction and energy are involved here. You want to really get down to what are the concepts that are there and what are those concepts all about and really showing you understand the concepts and how they apply in this situation. And that's quite hard to do. So that's why we draft this, obviously. Um, you then maybe just wanted to have a bit of an introduction to the fact that you're going to talk about she here then and try and do a she heading if you can or at least get a she a, um, comment there about which one you're doing in the introduction sentence there your uh, topic sentence there so if you're going to talk about development you need to sort of show uh, somewhere in there what the development is and what the evidence for the development is so if you're going to talk about it's showing a wide range of evidence across disciplines make sure you put that in italics and really talk about the evidence of that in there, okay? Uh, if there's other parts of the development that are relevant, try and do those as well, or instead. Um, you may find you need to do a second she one here. Um, you don't always, uh, because you might end up doing lots of application limitation and conclusion here, so in which case, one she there and a really good conclusion based on a discussion about applications and limitations may be enough. But if you've got very little in terms of application limitations to discuss in your conclusion, you may want to do a second she here. So you could do influence or you might do communication and collaboration. But again, make it really clear uh, which part of that's being shown there. So if you're doing influence, you could be talking about one field of science influencing another. So um, I tend to then sort of make sure that I talk about what the applications are and, you know, is it scientists finding solutions to certain problems? Uh, are they designing action for sustainability or the environment? Uh, uh, there might be some limitations to that, that there's actually bad for the environment there, or there's too much economic cost, or there's negative impacts or whatever. Or there might be safety issues, in which case you're sort of arguing against them, uh, but and that's coming under limitations really. So try and do one about applications here, and it might be future applications as well that could be used for based on this. But again, look at the dot points, dot points to, to try and find out what things will be relevant here based on your topic. Okay. 
And then you should be able to come up with a justified conclusion by balancing the points for and against here from this here, just to sort of finish off there what your conclusion is about this, this new development or this new topic or new article you've been doing. Okay. And hopefully that will be enough to sort of give you some guidance there. You don't have to follow that. It's, it's really just someone suggested, uh, could I put one up? And that's what I've done. Okay. Thank you.